Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech University, and in this video we're going to explore the meaning and definition of state. Now, if you've had a course in automatic controls, maybe at the undergraduate level, you will have likely encountered the notion of state while representing a linear dynamic system in state space form. So here we have the state equation x dot equals ax plus du, and an output equation y is equal to cx plus du. Now I'm using double underbars for matrices and single underbars for vectors. This is what you probably would have done for a linear dynamic system. We can al also do this for a nonlinear system. We could say x dot is equal to some function f, and it's a function of x, u, and p. And y is some other function, in general nonlinear, and it's function also of x, u, and t. And of course, x is the state. Now, just a little bit more detail here on the linear side. The state vector x is n by 1, and the output vector y is r by 1, and the inputs, the u, are uh, m by 1. So that means that a is an n by n matrix, b is uh, n by m, and c is r by n and D is uh, R by M. Again, those are all matrices. You may have also taken a differential equation and put it into state variable form. So for instance, given a second order differential equation, W double dot plus three, W dot plus two W equals, let's say three U. And let's also say that we had a couple outputs, that y1 was equal to uh, w minus w dot, and let's have y2 equal w plus w dot, just for fun. Now the next thing you do is define some states. And so you would do something like x1 is equal to w, and x2 is equal to w dot. And since we're looking for this state equation, then you differentiate those two quantities. So x1 dot is equal to w dot, and of course that is equal to x2. And x2 dot is equal to w double dot, and that is equal to negative 3 w dot minus 2w plus 3u. And so we can write that in terms of our state variables as negative 3x2 minus 2x1 plus 3u. And then finally, we can mash all this together into a matrix form. And so we could have x dot, which is, if I get a little bit more specific about that, that's x1, x2 dot is equal to some matrix times x1, x2, the state. And now we can fill in with the elements of that matrix would be 0, 1. I'm picking that off of this equation. And for the second row, I pick it off this equation, and I get negative 2, negative 3. And then we also have this uh, matrix B, which in this case is just a vector. And it would be 0 from this equation and 3 from this equation. And so there we have the state equation. Now we can go ahead and do the outputs. So y, which is equal to y1, y2, is equal to the matrix C times x. And I won't write that all out again. But now we have to go up to this equation, our y1 output equation. Well, that's w minus w dot. Well, that is just x1 minus x2. So it would be 1 minus 1 in those two entries. Then we go to this equation, w plus w dot. So it's x1 plus x2, like so. And it has no dependency on the u, so those are just 0. That's a, a vector there. And so there we have it. And you may have learned how to do this in some of your other courses, but we're still left with a little bit of a puzzle. And that is, you might say to yourself, but what is, I capitalize that, a state? We know it's x, but what the heck is it? We've defined it. But let's get a little bit more rigorous in terms of what x really is. 
and here is what it is. So I've just written this definition out ahead of time so that I wouldn't have to sit there and uh, scrawl it across the screen. And I'll just read through it and explain some of the pieces. So a state, a dynamical system state at t equal t0 denoted by x, the vector, at t0 is the sort of in general information needed at t0 that together with the input u of t for all, that's that symbol, for all t greater than or equal to t0 can be used to compute the system's output y of t for all t greater than or equal to t0. So what it's saying is that it is all the information that you need that if you also have the input for all time, you can then calculate the output for all time. Now let's look at a little example and work through this. So consider the following uh, linear dynamic system. Let's say that we have x1 dot minus x2 equals 0. And we have x2 dot equals u. And let's say our output y, we'll just have one output is x1 plus x2. Now given that dynamic system, you're tempted to say, well, x1 and x2 are states because it kind of looks like that state variable form, but let's not leap to that conclusion. Instead, let's just ask ourselves, based on this definition above in the box, what is the information needed that if we had it, we could create y of t for all t greater than or equal to t0 if we also had the input u of t? What we would need is the initial condition. And I'll just denote that as i period c period. We would need the initial conditions. And for this dynamic system, the initial conditions would be x1 at t0 and x2 at t0. And if we don't have those, we won't be able to specifically say what the output y of t is. We, of course, also need u of t. for all t greater than or equal to t0. Now, if we're trying to construct this y of t, and I didn't indicate that those are functions of time, but certainly y is a function of time, x1 is a function of time, and x2 is a function of time, then really what we need, and perhaps I should have put this quantity down first, really what we need is x1 of t and x2 of t. But of course, to find those, what we need are these two things. We need the u and we need the initial conditions. Now let's just convince ourselves of that for this dynamic system in particular. Let's go ahead and assume that we know x1 at t0 and x2 at t0. So we'll assume that those are known. And let's go ahead and assume that u of t is also known. And let's even get more specific. Let's say that u of t is equal to a unit step function that takes off, that starts up at uh, time equal t0. So I've used this funny no notation of a uh, integer that looks suspicious, suspiciously like a 1, but really what I'm trying to indicate there is that that's a unit step function. So if I were to plot uh, this function u t minus t0, and this is time equal t0, what the unit step function looks like is it's zero up to here, and then it jumps up to one, and then it goes off like that forever. So just to get a little bit more specific, y t, or one t minus t zero is equal to zero for t less than t zero, and it's equal to one for t greater than or equal to t zero. And that's what I've just sketched down too. Okay, so we have these two things. We know our input now for all time, and let's go ahead and convince ourselves that indeed we can calculate x1 and x2, and therefore calculate y. And if, if we can do that, then we can say that in fact, these two things are the states at time equal t0. Well, let's do the second equation first. Let's do the x2 dot is equal to u, and we know what u is, it's equal to one, this uh, step function that uh, starts up at t0. So if we just integrate both sides, what we'll have, if we integrate from t0 to t, we'll have d x2 of tau, d tau, d tau, 
is equal to t0 to t this funny uh, unit step function tau minus t0 d tau and we can do some fundamental theorem of calculus stuff here and so we get x2 of t minus x2 of t0 and if we integrate a unit step what we would get is tau minus t0 times the unit step function tau minus t0 evaluating from t0 to t and now we can just solve for x2 of t and it's equal to x2 t0 plus and we evaluate this expression at uh, these limits and we'll get t minus t0 times the unit step t minus t0 and there it is so we're halfway there and now we just have to do the x1 dot equation and that looked like x1 dot equals x2 and we can play the same game where we integrate both sides and so we integrate the x1 dot from t0 to t and we have dx1 tau d tau d tau is equal to the integral t0 to t of that box expression above so we would have x2 t0 d tau plus the integral t0 to t tau minus t0 and our lovely step function d tau do some more fundamental theorem of calculus business and we get x1 of t minus x1 of t0 is equal to now we work on this term uh, what do we have here we would get uh, t minus t0 x2 t0 x2 t0 is just a constant so really I'm just integrating one d tau and so I just have t minus t0 I was just kind of doing that in my head um, and now this one we have this piece so we're going to end up with a one half t minus t0 squared and we still have our lovely unit step function and there we go all I would have to do is throw this x1 of t0 over to the other side and I would have a nice expression for x1 of t and don't forget what we're trying to do is to show that we can write down y of t which is equal to x1 of t plus x2 of t for all t greater than or equal to t0 and indeed we can because we can calculate as we've just done x1 of t and x2 of t if we know u of t and x1 at t0 and x2 at t0 I claim you already knew this from differential equations now in the previous page we had a definition of state and it was based on a particular instant in time t0 so let me just go back up there for a second I had a dynamical system state at t equal t0 denoted by x at t0 etc etc now what we can do though is generalize that idea to any time and so when we talk about state we usually think about it in terms of its whole trajectory in time x1 of t and x2 of t and so we think of them as plots oftentimes x1 of t x2 of t they start off at some initial condition and they do something there's x1 of t and let's say this is x2 of t they have some trajectories in time and then once you know those then that means that you can also create a trajectory in time for y in this case just a sum of x1 and x2 and there's no way i'm going to be able to do that well with those two little sketches i drew but you can imagine it's something the sum of those two quantities this notion of state is not restricted to linear dynamic systems 
There was nothing in that box definition about linearity. And at the beginning of this video, I showed this representation of a dynamic system. And in general, this covers both linear and nonlinear dynamic systems, where f and g are in general nonlinear functions of the states x, the inputs u and pi. Now let's just look at a quick example of a nonlinear dynamic system and explore its state. So let's say we had some theta double dot t uh, plus gr gravity over L sine theta of t equals some u of t. So this is a large angle pendulum basically. And let's say that the output phi of t is just equal to the angle theta of t. Now we can write this system into state variable form, into this form. We can define x1 is equal to theta and x2 is equal to theta dot. x1 dot is equal to theta dot, which is equal to x2. And x2 dot is equal to theta double dot, which is equal to negative gr over L sine theta, which is x1, plus u. Now if I take this information and I write it into this vector form, what I would have is x dot is equal to x2 minus gr over l sine x1 plus u. And I submit this is this vector function is f. It's exactly this. And our output equation y, in this case, is just equal to x1. And so that's our g. Now, to create y, what we need for this system is we need to know u of t for all t greater than or equal to t0. And we need to know the initial conditions. We would need to know x1, which is theta, at t0. And we would need to know x2 at t0, which is theta dot. Because we know that this is what we need in order to solve this nonlinear differential equation to be able to represent the output, then we know that these are legitimate states of the system. One thing to keep in mind, though, state definitions are not unique. We could have defined those very differently and still had a legitimate state representation. Now, the last thing we're going to do is introduce some notation. And this notation is rather important for uh, future work that we'll be doing. And it really captures the essence of the definition of state. Specifically, what we're going to do is say that for any x at t0, and if we have u of t for all t greater than or equal to t0, then that implies that we can compute y of t for all t greater than or equal to t0. And so what this notation does is it implies that these are the states. The notation looks rather burdensome, but it turns out it's going to be very useful for us when we explicitly and formally go through the concept of linearity. To summarize, we did a quick example of how to create a state space representation of a dynamic system. And then we went into the formal definition of state. And then looked at an example to try and reinforce that definition. Then finally introduced some notation that captures that definition of state. So again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech University, and thanks for watching.